What is up, everybody? Jay Nell here with my UFC 201 prediction video and my UFC on Fox 20 recap video. Just real quick, I have to apologize for my handling of UFC on Fox 20. I completely dropped the ball. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to do the research. I did the video, but I had issues uploading it and it didn't upload until after the event aired. I didn't get a chance to see the whole event. So again, not my normal standards. I apologize. <laughs> Let's get into it. I had a bad night. Only went two out of five. Kind of fitting. Uh, bear with me. I'm outside. Let's get into it. I came into the event late. Came in just in time to see me losing my pick of Frankie Sands. I came in just in time to see Eddie Wyland boot bopping up against the cage and seeing her stop the fight. So someone let me know how that went. And also, who would you like to see Eddie Wyland fight next? Next up onto the main card. I, I took a risk and I lost my pick of Callan Curran to beat Felice Herring. I, again, dropping the ball on the research, not realizing Felice is 34 years old. She had a bunch of nagging injuries, so the year plus off was the best thing for her. She looked sharp. She looked uh, great shaped, phys physically cut up. I was like, dang girl. She looked great. She was getting the best of the stand-up game. Had the better shot selection, the more damaging shots. But as soon as Callan clocked her a good one, Callan got overzealous. She moved in way too quickly too uh, close and they ended up on the ground where I knew Felice had the upper hand. She had a nice smooth transition to the back, tap tap, rear naked choke. Who would you like to see Felice Herrick fight next? Next up, I got this pick. I chose Francis Gano to beat uh, Bohan Miyagovic. Say quickly, it doesn't sound as bad. <laughs> kind of some controversy here. I actually do think it was an early stoppage, but I still think Francis would have won. It ended in the first round. Francis is scary. Sitting this big old man stalking you, not throwing a punch. He literally only threw like one punch before the storm began. <laughs> So he's stalking him, stalking him, and then when the one connected, it actually didn't connect cleanly. He was moving back, but then he knocked Bohan on the ground, uh, got on top, raining down shots, and the first few shots landed cleanly. The next shots did not. Bohan did a good job, a really good job, actually, of hiding his head and having both arms. He really managed to cover up his whole head. Uh, the shots that landed were completely sliding off the shoulder, completely hitting the guard, sliding off and hitting the mat. He was not hitting Bohan uh, cleanly when the fight was stopped. I just think that Herb should have maybe prompted him a little bit. A, you need to move. A, you need to do something. A, I'm gonna stop it and then stop it. Um, again, I still think that Francis would have won in like 20 more seconds. Just, it was a tad early in my opinion. Let me know what you thought of that. Who do you think Francis Gano should fight next? Um, okay, <laughs> I'll be in a second. Dinner's ready. All right. Uh, <laughs> next up, um, I got this pick as well. Co-main event, I chose Edson Barbosa to beat uh, Gilbert Melendez, and he did. And he won all three rounds. I don't know what that last judge was looking at. He won all three rounds. Them kicks, honey. Them kicks. Check out my prediction video. I kind of lay out all the reasons why I just could not pick Gilbert Melendez. And honestly, Gilbert looked like a man who was coming off some issues. He looked a little smaller than usual. He looked a little softer than usual. He wasn't as aggressive. He didn't seem as sure of himself as usual. And that was partly because Edson Barbosa got that league leg by the end of the first round. I was like, got it. Got the league leg. <laughs> it was done. Done, son. Uh, um, whenever... Uh, Gilbert could actually get him to stay in the punching pocket, he was able to clock him. He was actually able to stun him in the second round. However, in that second round was when Edson Barbosa's kicks were completely spinning Gilbert in a circle. And he ended that round on top, raining down shots. So that's why I say all three rounds, Edson Barbosa and Edson, I think you're at, I think the time is now. You're gonna have to probably fight one or two more times, but you need to start barking for that title shot now, now. You're ready, it's now. So uh, who do you think should be next for Edson Barbosa? Like I said, I understand him having to fight one or two more fights in that lightweight division, but I think we're, we're seeing his uh, road to the title shot here. Uh, now, main event, I lost this pick. I chose Holly Holm to beat um, uh, uh, Valentina Shevchenko. She did not. Shevchenko won a three round unanimous decision, I think it was. I'm not quite sure because I didn't see the fight at all. told you I completely dropped the ball so someone let me know what happened someone let me know what happened all right on to UFC 201 predictions and I I did not drop the ball on this one first up I'm choosing uh, Uncle Creepy to beat Justin Scroggins I'm choosing Francisco Rivera to beat Eric Perez now both those fights could go either way and I think they could steal the night I think both those fights are gonna be real fun now Matt Brown versus Jake Ellenberger Jake Ellenberger is actually 39 years old and I believe he's starting to kind of look it um, he's had some wars he's had some injuries and I feel like in the last few fights he's looked good and looked strong but he looks like a fighter in the winter uh, 
uh, of his career to me, who's beginning that winter, not in it, beginning. Uh, and Matt Brown, who's only not that, not that much younger. I think he's 34, 35 years old, but physically, I just think, I think he's in better condition. I think he's more durable. I think he's taken less injuries actually than uh, Jake has as well. And coming off his last loss to Damian Maya, you know, Matt Brown is a determined type of person. He trained really hard and thought that, thought that he could get with Damian Maya on the ground. Instead, he got dominated from minute one to minute end. And so you know he's got a, a, a chip on his shoulder coming into this fight. He's got more tools than Jake. I think he's more willing to use his entire skill set than Jake is. I think he's a little bit more unpredictable than Jake is. Although they're both willing to brawl, both have one punch knockout power. This could go three rounds. This could go three seconds. And it could go either way because Jake has that KO power. But this could still fight the night as well. I'm going with Matt Brown. Now, uh, co-main event and we're seeing Rose Nama Yunus take on Carolina uh, Kowakowicz. Carolina Kowakowicz, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. She came in and stunned us against Ronda Marcos by dominating her. She uh, started off with Krav Maga to the point where she's actually a Krav Maga instructor. Now Krav Maga is an art form that I'm not as familiar with. I've seen some documentaries, I've seen some, I've, I've seen a lot on it, but I'm not as familiar with it. From what I've seen, it is a close quarters combat uh, art. It's used in a lot of military, especially in the, mil the Middle East. Um, um, it's a more aggressive art form where you're kind of first, you, you fight into your opponent, you move into your opponent as opposed to, you know, you know what I'm saying? So that's from what I've been able to see from what I know. And uh, she's that, you can see that in her. She took, really takes the fight to you. She fights in your chest takes to chess you know what I'm saying she has power especially for the straw weight division she has diversity she just kind of she's kind of a question mark because we are a little unfamiliar with her not as familiar with her art form as a whole you know what I'm saying so she is kind of a wild card there now Rose Nama Yunus I am very familiar with Rose Nama Yunus she has a lot of eyes on her people think if she wins this fight she's probably gonna get Yomana next the champ next and I'm one of them actually so not only am I looking to see her beat um, Carolina, I'm picking her. I, I'm also looking to see how how she fights this fight. Again, since Carolina with the Krav Maga, she fights in your chest. I'm going to need to see Rose with a much higher offensive output to kind of beat her back, and she's going to need to be first. She's also going to need a much higher output and to be first against Joanna. You see what I'm saying? So we're really, really looking at to see how. Um, um, Rose performs in this fight. Black belt in karate, black belt in taekwondo, blue belt in jiu-jitsu. She is unpredictable. She will pull out all of those tools. She is a killer in that ring. She will go for the kill. She will make the opportunity. She, she's an exciting fighter. She's a kind of a fan favorite. That's why there's so many eyes on her. Um, she's aggressive. She's also smart. She's very technical. I mean, like I said, she's aggressive. She will use all of her tools, but the technique, if you see that fight against Paige Van Zandt, Paige Van Zandt wasn't supposed to fight her. I felt bad for her. She, she got fed to the wolves and just simply got outclassed. But the technique on Rose is, is stellar. I like Rose because she's unassuming. She doesn't really want the limelight. I kind of wish she would promote more. She's a beautiful girl and cut all her hair off because she's like, don't look at my beauty. You know what I mean? Uh, she's got her, her fiance that does all the talking for her. But she just wants to concentrate on fighting. She just wants to fight. And I do like that about her. She has a nice, easy charm about her. A nice uh, girl next door in an urban area type uh, charm to her. And I like that about her. That's why she got the name Thug Rose. I like her. I don't think she's a poser. She gets a lot of trash for no reason. Anyway, so I'm looking to see Rose win this fight. And I'm looking to see how. To see if she's even ready to get in the octagon with Joanna. Let alone give her a run for her money. All right. Main event. And we're seeing my boy. UFC welterweight champion ruthless Robbie Lawler against another one of my boys actually Tyron Woodley now Tyron we haven't seen in a long time he's actually only won three uh, fights in a row but he had an injury and if correct me if I'm wrong I think he's coming off that injury which has me concerned from the jump uh, but let's talk about the skill set he's a wrestler first big powerful strong wrestler downhill when he gets the momentum he's very hard to stop um, big tree trunk thighs he's got nice kicked has developed a standing game to the point where he doesn't have to use his wrestling to beat you he just has that it's a nice uh ace in the hole to have there he has the dirty boxing he will get you up against that fence he has the mechanics he knows how to feel the leverage the weight and all of that he's he's good all the way around solid but again i believe he's coming off of this injury and this, a long layoff which you don't want you want to be in fighting form when you're going against Robbie Lawler. I love me some Robbie Lawler. You guys know I enjoy watching him beat champ so much. 
he is one of the athletes that I am definitely living through and I am loving it. So, Robbie Lawler. He started off actually as just an MMA fighter. He kind of started training all the way around. You know, he was already doing professional by the time he was 20 years old. It wasn't until after he was already into his career where he started to focus on the kickboxing. And that's when we really start to see the first level of growth where he got really diverse and unpredictable and was kind of still too chaotic actually and we get caught or kind of gassed sometimes. We saw a second level. We saw like a second corner turned with Robbie that I didn't expect, a maturity that I didn't expect where he was able to control that chaos. The patience that we saw against Rory McDonald in that first round, he literally used that whole first round the way Anderson Silva does just to simply scout, simply scout. And then he started to work his game plan in that second round. And it's a good thing he finished him in the fifth because most of the judges had him losing three rounds. So I did not. I had a 2-2 going in there. So the patience we saw from him, he's still growing. He's still maturing. And then the skill set, again, the kickboxing, the diversity with the kicks and the punching. He has the Muay Thai, the elbows. He has wrestling. He has submission. And then he has something that you cannot quantify. And that's that you're going to have to kill me. That's what Robbie has. <laughs> Robbie has this, you gonna have to kill me, you gonna have to stab me to take this belt, man. <laughs> and how do you quantify that? You can't teach that, you can't learn it, can't buy it, can't borrow it. So, I don't know what it's gonna take to beat Robbie Lawler. And I'm not picking Tyrone Woodley. I don't think he's the man to do it, especially coming off that long layoff. So I think it's gonna, we're going to have to see something we've never seen before, I think, to beat Robbie. Maybe it'll be Wonder Boy. Who knows? But it ain't going to be Tyron. Picking my boy. Let me know. They're both my boys. Picking Robbie. Who, let me know your picks. Any injury updates. Let me know how you did on both events since I did two and one here. And again, I apologize for me dropping the ball. Can't wait for this next week's event. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter. I will have a 50 second prediction and recap videos. I'm on Snapchat now. Subscribe, like, talk to me, take care, and goodbye.